Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Sport with me, Andrew Pollard. I'm joined by Joe and Adam as we are here to look at our uh, our World Elevens for 2018 uh, in the football world. So, as the years come to an end, uh, bear in mind we're looking at 2018 as a whole, so not just 2017-18 or 2018-19 season. Year 2018, um, who wants to go first? Adam, at the end, let's go with you. For the whole team. Yeah, for yeah. the whole team, I'll, I'm going to. What formation are you going with first? I'm going for four four two. You've got to stick with the simple. Standard. Has to be the simple. Um, Standard up front, Chester. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave Chester players out of this now. Don't okay. Worry. I'm uh, going to go for Aguero. Right. And I'm going to go for Dybala. Right. Okay. Um, on either side of the wings, I'm going to go one for Shakiri. Really? Yeah. And the other side for Sassignol. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and in the middle, I'd have Keita and De Bruyne. Mm-hmm. Navigator. What? Navigator. Oh. Yeah. 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 And um, you've been paying him off, back. haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who at the back? Sorry. <laughs> and at the back, at left back, I would go for. Who did I say? I think it was Mendy. Right. Okay. Um, in central defence, I'm going to go for. Virgil. But yeah, it was Virgil actually. Virgil van Dijk, yeah. along with um, Vincent Company. Right. Okay. And on the right side, I'm going to go for Trent Alexander Arnold. And in goal. And in goal, Edison. All right. Okay. So you've got a load of copites. <laughs> Two crocs, yeah. Ben, ben, Benjamin Mendy, who played, what, nine games in, in 2018? Very good player. And Vincent Company, who's got no I knees. Did, I did get confused with Mendy and Robertson, to be fair. Yeah, but two well, very good know, players. I thought I'd better keep a Liverpool player out, an extra one otherwise. Well, I was expecting you to be the one full of Liverpool players, but you've kind of jumped the gun totally. So, Stanners, reveal yours. What formation are we going with? Well, I'm going for 4 3 3. Right, okay. For the attacking formation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go for De Gea and goal. Manchester right. It pains me to put Manchester United player in here, but he's, he's a world-class goalkeeper. I know he struggled early on this season, but that was more defensively for Manchester United, not really down to the goalkeeper, because he saved them a lot this season yep. already. And obviously he was fantastic for them last season. Uh, Alisson was up there, but I think De Gea just edges him. And not because of the mistake in the, in the game against Manchester United. <laughs> no, or the mistake against Leicester. Right back was a difficult position. I wasn't really sure, but I thought this... this Lad has been consistent throughout his whole career at right back, and obviously he did make the FIFA Pro 11 as well. Mm-hmm. It's Danny Alves, which is a bit controversial. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's well, what, what you what you thinking there? Obviously a fantastic player over the years. Well, he, he's he's consistent throughout the years. He's he, performed he's well in every league. He's coming up towards the end of his career though, now, isn't he? He's coming up towards the end of his career, but he's still very consistent. All right, he's not starting games for PSG this season, but no. he did play quite a lot last season for them and Juventus the season before. He's been fantastic for Barcelona before that as well. And Sevilla. I, I think, and Sevilla. That's I think the other that. options at right back could be Kevin Trippier with the way he performed for England yeah. in the summer and Trent Alexander-Arnold, the way he's been for Liverpool uh-huh. coming through as a 19-year-old. But I've gone for Danny Alves as the non-biased option. Right, OK. <laughs> uh, obviously, centre-back pairing, Rafael Varane, World Cup winner, Champions League winner. You really? Can't, you can't knock him out, out okay. of that because he's won both the trophies. You, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I put him in there. He might not be a popular choice, but... And obviously partnering him, he's as cool as you like, Virgil van Dijk. Got him. Absolutely got that he plays for you lot. But, uh, yeah, fantastic player. Can't argue with that, I guess. Fantastic player, what he's done for, since he's come into Liverpool. £75 million price tag on his shoulders, and obviously he's shouldered that burden quite well, and he's performed really well. Improved Liverpool's defence massively, and then um, what he's done... Twice, cap- though, hasn't he? For Liverpool, just, just once, I think. Yeah, just once against Everton, on his debut, I think. Yeah. I was there on the cop that day. It was beautiful, uh-huh. and uh, obviously he's done well captaining the Dutch national team as well. Very well. I like I, too fair to. I like how he's brought along Joe Gomez as well. Obviously Gomez is injured at the moment, but those two together, he seems to have taken them under his wing on the pitch, and you see some of the interviews off the pitch as well, and they seem to have a, a strong bond. So yeah, pains me all to say this, but yeah, he's um, a, a very important piece of a, of, a, of that successful jigsaw so far. And at left back, another another copite, as you call him, Andy, Andy mm. Robertson. I, I know people might say, why not Marcelo, why not Mendy, in Adam's case. But the reason why I put Robbo in there is because he, he's come from a whole city. Mm-hmm. And people are saying, oh, he's from a relegated team, £8 million. Pound. What's Jürgen Klopp doing? But I've looked at his stats before he comes to Liverpool. I thought, it's actually kind of an interesting side. Let's see how he does. And he's, he's come to Liverpool, £8 million. Pound. 
He's been fantastic and consistent since he got in the team all season. His assists are unbelievable. And then he made it to the Champions League final. What more do you want? Although I, I, yeah. I, he's not in my team, but he, I think he's a cracking player. I was Again, it was another one where I was gutted he went to you lot. I, I really rated him at Hull just for his energy. Um, uh, Jose Mourinho recently after the, uh, the Liverpool game where he was talking about how he was tired just watching him. So yeah, it was good that you got him out for 8 million as well. That's... Nothing. That's yeah, absolutely nothing in these days. Stock wants to skybox and block it now. Mm. Te- they? Technically a free transfer because we sold them Kevin Stewart for eight million, so bounces <laughs> it out. But <laughs> is that how much that was? Wow, wow. And then obviously the midfield three. It was kind of difficult picking the midfield because there's that many talented midfielders out there. Mm-hmm. But I've gone for Kante in the hold, holding the midfield positions. Modric and Tony Cruz. Even Hazard was a shout. Right. But I didn't think he was as consistent as he should have been last season mm-hmm. for Chelsea. And that's why he's he misses out. He was consistent for Belgium, though, wasn't he? He was consistent. In the World Cup. captain. Yeah, he was consistent in the World Cup, but I thought the way that he played for Chelsea last season wasn't... He's obviously picked up his standards this season yeah, for Chelsea yeah. at the start of the season, and he was fantastic in the World Cup for Belgium. But I think Tony Cruz, how consistent he's been throughout the whole season for Real Madrid and what he's done. And he was... a. Uh, Star player in that poor Germany side during the World Cup. So he, Modric speaks for himself. Mm-hmm. He's won all the pretty much all the awards this year, and he's yeah. won won the Champions League again, and was a, a driving force for that Croatian team at the World Cup. And in Kelvin Kante, fantastic for both Chelsea and the national uh, France national team. Mm-hmm. Forward three, I've got on the right hand side. There's only one man, the Egyptian king Mohamed Salah. Forty four goals in in all competitions in his debut <sighs> season at Liverpool. I thought you say I'm Mohammed then at Aston Villa. <laughs> Isn't he the only Egyptian king? Well, debatable. <laughs> I've got Lionel Messi because you can't can't miss out the the goat, the greatest of all time. And then Kylian Mbappe. Right. Okay. Mbappe, that's like, yeah. That's like fantastic season for PSG last year. It was fantastic for Monaco the season before, and his World Cup was absolutely stunning. Can't argue with that no. at all. And at like... 19 years of age. God, the things I was doing at 19 years of age. Definitely wasn't winning World Cups, put it that way. Um, yeah. So that's my 11. That's not so a bad Cristiano lineup. Ronaldo fans, but he just doesn't make it. He doesn't, I don't make it. Don't well, worry, I do I, rate him, I've got I'm you covered not. there on that front. Uh, right, I guess I should go with mine. And as much as I don't tend to agree with Liverpool fans quite often, um, you've got quite a few of my players there, Stannis, or I've got quite a few of yours. So I've gone again a 4 3 3. David De Gea in Nets as the best goalkeeper in the world, hands down. No pun intended. Centre halves, I've gone with Rafael Varane and Sergio Ramos. Um, I just think as a twosome, they're. You, I think sometimes you have to have a bit of a bit of ugly at the back, and Sergio yeah. Ramos is that ugly side of the game. Yeah. Varane's a bit more. He's just elegant on the ball, um, and, and they won the European. Well, they won, won the Champions League, and Varane won the World Cup as well. So all the points you were saying about Varane, I cannot argue with that, and that's why he's in my team. And Ramos, he's a natural leader um, and a horrible, horrible bastard um, <laughs> all the time. Uh, left back, I was torn on this one, um, and I think I'm going to go with uh, Marcos Alonso. I think my other, my other option was Marcello but I think we're going to go with Marcus Alonso just because especially this season now he, they've gone to four at the back and he's dropped in as, a, as an out and out left back but it's not hindered his game he's still got forward as he does still chips in with goals still gets assists um, and defensively he's, he's, he's solid if not spectacular but he's just offers so much going forward um, especially with the midfield I've got I think it would allow the fullbacks a lot of um, opportunities and freedom to get forward uh, right back I've got Sime Visalko, who I can never pronounce correctly. So apologies if that is totally butchered. Um, from Croatia, uh, I think well, Atletico Madrid last season won the Europa League and then went on to have a brilliant uh, World Cup with um, with Croatia. Uh, currently Inter Milan and doing all right over there. But I just think based on the run that Croatia had in the World Cup and how important he was again as an attacking fullback, um, yeah, he makes it for me because there's not. I don't think there's that many options as, as for right backs really looking across it. I mean, there's there's lots of good shouts. Alexander Arnold, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, for me, he gets a nod there. My midfield three is exactly the same as your midfield three. I have uh, Angolo Kante, Luka Modric, and Tony Cruz. I pretty much agree with everything you said on that. Uh, Kante, World Cup winner, the best holding midfielder in uh, in world football, best ball winning midfielder in world football. Um, and now he's adding a few goals to his game, playing a bit further up on the pitch. Luka Modric, World Player of the Year, he's just, well, well, won the, the Golden Ball Award at the World Cup as well. Uh, just such a beautiful player to watch and Tony Cruz was he's been brilliant for Real Madrid and like you said he was the one shining star in a really awful uh, German team he was he, it, I, almost at times I felt uh, until the South Korea game uh, I thought he might pull out uh, Lothar Mateus where he just drove like he did in, in the 1990 World Cup where he just it, it wasn't so much a one man 
team at that point, but it felt like it was. It felt like Lothar Matthias drove that team to the final, into the they, World they Cup. They were getting on. Germany. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're a team that's getting on. They're just waiting yeah. for some fresh legs. They are. I think. I think they need to. Joachim Lowe needs to go as well. Really on that. They just needs a whole fresher approach. I think because there's a lot of young talent there. But that's another topic for another day. Uh, you mentioned the, the goat. I don't know if I'd say he was the goat, but he's certainly very, very good. Uh, Lionel Messi. He's on my right side of my front three. Uh, Fifty goals as of the weekend just gone. He got a hat trick. That was fifty goals, two thousand eighteen. So you can't argue that at all. Up front. As my number nine, I can't believe I've gone with this, uh, Luis Suarez. Uh, I cannot stand him, but he's just been brilliant. Uh, last season, 31 goals uh, for Barcelona uh, alone, and he's carried on this year with 11 so far. And he's just he's so key to how Lionel Messi can play um, and to other players like Coutinho for that Barcelona team. He, he, his work rate allows them more freedom, and he also scores a lot of goals himself, so you can't knock that. And on the left, I'm going to go with the man you left out. Uh, oh, possibly the GOAT, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, who uh, last season won his, his fourth Champions League at Real Madrid, uh, his fifth in total in his career, 44 goals in 44 games last season for Real Madrid, 11 so far and 16 for Juventus. They're the one bit of stats I've done some research on. So yeah, yeah, uh, CR7 gets in my team as well. So no place for Salah, unlucky. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. So. No Salah. No Salah. Yeah. No Salah. <laughs> no Salah on my team. Uh, no Liverpool players. Uh, in fact, only two Premier League players, and one of them, Alonso, was up in the air. So um, yeah, I think it's it says a lot about Spanish football. I think. Uh, oh no, Kante as well. Uh, but yeah, I think our teams across the board. Apart from some of your rogue picks, but. <laughs> I I think Sassignon will become better. He, he will, but I'm I'm thinking more. Adam's gone a few years down the line. You have, yeah. You're thinking what what's going on in, in Football Manager in like four years' time. It's like, well, Cesson's really good, so I'm going to have him in there. And Comedy's <laughs> still playing three games a season, so I'm going to have him in there for longevity. <laughs> um, but right, that is our uh, World Eleven for 2018. Let us know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, we'll see you next time in 2019. And hopefully, Ryan Session will fulfil his potential to see your team look a lot better. Will. Yeah, right. Later.